Well, so I'm on this Route 192 trying to skirt around Carpinteria and actually join Freeway 101 up around Santa Barbara, which is probably going to be impossible to do. So it's a very rural country road here. And um, I just saw three signs set against trees by the road. It, it went like this. They were handwritten and they went like this. Your map lies. All roads to Santa Barbara are closed. Go back to town and buy something. <laughs> well, it could be there right here. <laughs> it's not looking too good. <laughs> so, up above, uh, there was um, there was an orchard. It's a lot like this. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> It was a lot like this. You see, you go off the side of the road and you're buried up above the axle of your car in brown mud. And up there, it was a lot wetter up there around the orchard. And it was, but it was rather similar. The road was thinner. Route 192 was thinner, but it, you went off the side of the road at your peril. <laughs> Lord knows what's about to happen. So. So basically what we have, I think, is the, the huge fire, the Thomas fire up in this area, followed by a couple of days of rain. At least there was rain down in my area in the San Fernando Valley. And then that brought the mud, I suppose, more so than usual, down onto the roads and across the roads. Look at this, road closed, 192, just like they said. I gotta go back down this way and I, down towards the ocean and I think too soon so we'll see down towards the ocean this is Summerland and it's kind of a ghost town today uh, all the northbound 101 entrances are blocked with road barricades and here I see there's this big commotion up here all the traffic is stopped. I can see that traffic is heading southbound okay. Uh, but up here there's there's some to do going on. And the place is kind of, everything is, seems to be shut down. Uh, maybe there's a problem with supply, supplying the stores. And anyway, they probably figure nobody can come up here today. They're doing a lot of road repair work and repairing the um, utility wires alongside the country roads today. I'm guessing this might be just a turnaround place here where everybody goes back the way they came or else has to turn down south. So, well, it's been quite an exploration, but it didn't turn out that I could go up north like I thought I could. Uh, I had hoped to go up and come back down Route 5 today, but uh, I saw quite a few things along the way. And here's another sign, a very good sign that says, Thank you, firefighters. A big heart on it. I'm heading back now. This is uh, near the freeway, and there's flooding here uh, near Nidever and the freeway 101. I'm not so sure I'm supposed to be here right now. There's flooding on the freeway as well. Um, okay, hitting for higher ground now. Water on the left side. Water on the freeway. That might be the reason for the closure of the freeway. I'm not sure why that would happen after the storm. Uh, and the high ground is looks to be passable. Really, it looks like the best way to get around here is by bicycle. So, just looking forward to the future in case of other catastrophes, I feel it would be good to have on hand a bicycle and repair equipment for a bicycle and spare tires and so forth, maybe even two bicycles. Uh, 
and of course plenty of supplies because as I envision it let's say there were a catastrophe such as a fire or flood or civil unrest as there was in Washington DC when I was young I was working I was in high school and early college. I was working in Washington, D.C. in the summers and there was civil unrest and uh, the whole other side of the street from the place where I worked burned down, 7th Street Northwest. And it was a very hot summer, extremely hot summer, and I think tempers flared because of it. A lot of people didn't have air conditioning and so forth. Anyway, in, in times like that, in times of civil unrest or natural disaster or other catastrophe, it's uh, very important to have a plan set up and, and ready to go in advance, such as, for instance, the Red Cross Disaster Preparedness Plan that you can find online. Just starting with something as simple as that, ways to get in touch with your loved ones, ways to get around, having just the most basic emergency supplies, the ability to see at night using a flashlight, say, the ability to light a fire without causing a fire, and so on. Knowing how to shut off the, your, your gas outlets, you know, knowing what's safe and what's not safe to do, knowing to stay near home, for instance, and not venture out on the freeways when the freeways are closed. <laughs> Those are very important features of, uh, of preparedness for tomorrow, don't you think? So far, all the way through Summerland, I found no way to get on the freeway north or south, 101. And I'm trying something else here. We'll see what happens on Car Carpinteria Avenue. I crossed the freeway and I'm hoping to get on the 101 South. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> the place where I am right now on the side of the this is on the side of the freeway next to the closer to the beach is an alternate Route 101 right now and uh, traffic is completely stopped on that route which is a major north-south route. Of course Route 5 is a bigger route and there's just evidence of a lot of flooding through here and I'm about to go over to this stream here which I noticed while traveling is kind of interesting. Looks like the fire may have uprooted a lot of trees and stuff and then or maybe the trees fell because they burned and then the rains washed them into this body of water, this stream here. And then that was clogged up. I'll show you. See there? I don't know why that's there. Unless it all washed down here. Yes. I think, uh, yeah. This is fire debris, probably. And, uh, came down from the stream here, I see under that 101 over there, I see another bulldozer. Can you see it? Right there. Probably clearing out. There was probably quite a bit caught under the freeway. And here on this other side is more debris and, and more equipment. Kind of spectacular, huh? You just don't see that every day around here. Not such a big stream either, although the streams in California are, are known for 
becoming very full very fast during the meager periods of rainfall. So it's probably got no nah, not flooded right up to it's probably dry most of the year. It probably got right high when it rained. Probably gave the local people some cause for for alarm.